Good morning, Mike. Uh, of all the congratulatory message you received right after the game, which one meant the most or surprised you the most? I think just how many I got. Um, how many? I think uh, I, can't, I lost count. I'm, I'm still getting them today. <laughs> I think people are figuring out what's going on. I think people were surprised or didn't even know what was going on. So it probably took a day or two to uh, realize what actually happened. Mike Dero says in the ninth inning of a no hitter, it's just up to the gods at that point. <laughs> Did you feel like that? Really? Up to the gods. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> Means nothing what wow. you're doing on the mound. When, right, yeah. when you get Joey Votto. been on the mound. When you get Joey Votto to roll over right there, you're saying to yourself, it, it's happening. <laughs> I mean, at le leading the inning off, the, they, they pinch hit uh, some young guy. I, I, I haven't even heard of him. And um, I'm thinking, you know, I, I know nothing about him. Uh, I was thinking Emo was going to come out of the dugout and, uh, you know, kind of go over this hitter uh, with me. But I don't think he wanted to mess up my rhythm. So, uh, you know, just, just attacked him like I always do and uh, got him out. And then Votto came up, made a 3-1 changeup uh, for a strike. And then um, I think he was sitting off speed all day. And I think I surprised him with that 3-1 changeup. And then uh, the 3-2 changeup right after that got him to roll over. And then... You know, once that happened, um, you know, with two outs, I, I mean, I had to get it done at that point. Mike, you know, one of the things that I was thinking when I saw this happening was like, okay, when we're coming up as kids, we dream about being in the major leagues, and I'm like, I just want to get a hit in the big leagues. Well, you have two no hitters. Yeah. That that is like insane. What does that mean to you? Like, really, uh, the kid in you. What does that mean? Oh, it's it's special because you want to go out there as a. Uh, you know, as a guy and, and lead your team to, uh, you know, lead them deep into the game. And you, the ultimate goal is just to win the game. But, you know, w coming up as a, as a young kid and I didn't really throw hard and obviously still don't throw hard that hard now. But uh, it's it's just really cool. I mean, to be mentioned with a bunch of guys I've seen on that, that list with two no-nos. And uh, I remember Verlander joking with me uh, one day in Houston we were talking about the no-hitter, and he's like, well, in my first no-hitter, I was like, okay. And, uh, so I can kind of get out of mouth. But, uh, no, it was pretty funny. But uh, it's just really cool. I mean, obviously, as a kid, you're watching baseball. I, I watched every day, and, uh, you know, just, just to get to this point, I thought it was going to be pretty cool. And say, just to say, you know, you're in the major leagues, you're a big league pitcher, and then do things like this is just, just topping. It's just topping yeah. on the cake. Uh, jumping off that. When you threw your no-hitter with Houston, you threw your glove in the air, and I felt like you had that moment like, I just threw a no-hitter in the big leagues. On the flip side, this last no-hitter, you kind of looked at your teammates like, bring it, boys. We've been scuffling a little yeah. bit. Is that kind of, yeah. am I all right with that? Yeah, I said, let's go. Come on. I told you guys <laughs> I was going to pick you up, and uh, I, I, I told my team, I said, you know, I'm going to start picking you guys up. And that, that's what I told these guys uh, about a week ago. And, you know, it was about time because I've been very inconsistent the first month. Uh, you know, I don't think they really expected uh, – they didn't really know what to expect out of me. I was all, I was all over the place, to be honest. But, um, you know, I want to lead this team in the right direction. And, um, you know, that's, that was something that, you know, really meant a lot to me, you know, picking up this team. So, obviously, coming off of a, a tough road trip, and uh, I think everyone was kind of like – kind of down like you know what's going on we had the off day to kind of think about it and you know everyone came back home to see their families and relax and then come back uh tuesday night i just wanted to you know step you know s step us off on the right foot and uh you know get us a w mike having done it once and you're going through it again the other night how much had you learned how different were you in approaching it well I think uh, more so I just wanted to be myself and, and, and go out there with the mentality of just, just pitch. Don't try to overdo it uh, later in the game. Don't try to overthrow. Um, don't try to do anything outside of, you know, locating your pitches and, um, you know, making, making good pitches. And that's pretty much what I did. Uh, I was up there, you know, over 100 pitches after the seventh inning. And, you know, Bob was thinking about taking me out and mm. um, just – Looking out for the team. I mean, it was only a one-run game. I mean, we got we got some you know power arms down there in the pen, so um, those guys were ready to come in and shut the door if they they had to. But obviously, I didn't want to come out. But you know, the ultimate goal was winning that game, and you know, Bob had to look out for you know all of us as a as a whole. You've had a couple of days to digest everything. I was wondering if you could 
reflect on those defensive plays made by Profar and Loriano and just what that meant to, to obviously the ultimate outcome and just what you were thinking when they happened? Uh, I mean, <laughs> that made the outcome uh, what it was. Uh, you know, Profar, uh, this play you're seeing right here, I mean, I mean, the ball is hit in, in nowhere's, nobody's land. Like, nobody plays there. And uh, for him to go out there and make that dive and play, put his body on the line, it was huge. And then next pitch, I threw a first pitch curveball to Votto. He's all over it. And Loriano goes back there Ooh. like Superman, jumps up, catches it nonchalantly. Just, oh, I got it. <laughs> all right. Like a He's not surprised play. at making that pitch. So that's what's <laughs> crazy. His interview after the game was like, yeah, I, uh, I made the catch, and uh, it was a third out, I think. Uh, I, no you don't know deal. what he's doing, man. He's just, he's, uh, he just, yeah, he's out there having fun, making plays where he usually does, and he's just, he's, a, he's surprising everybody. But uh, to him, it's like routine. Like, did your dad really not find out about the no hitter until the previous oh, day, yeah. the, the day after? <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, obviously <laughs> three hour difference over there. He gets up pretty early, so uh, he he records the game and waits till the morning to uh, you know watch it. And um, it, it's really on me whether he has a good or bad day at work. So <laughs> it's it's a lot of pressure on me. He he gets up and watch the game. Obviously, he had a good day at work, and then he called me later on. I always tell him to call me around noon. Uh, that's kind of the time I'm getting ready to go to the ballpark or um, you know. So uh, we talk about the game. He tells me what pitches uh, I should have thrown, what pitches I shouldn't have thrown. Um, I got lucky with some of these, and uh, wait, wait, you definitely better be uh, thanking some of these guys. <laughs> Mike, you, you, nah, you he's, let brutal, him, he's brutally honest. You, you, Mike, you let him just not know until noon the next day. You let him find out no, by himself. No, he, he knew. Okay. <laughs> no, he he knew early in the morning on the East Coast. He knew about. He gets up probably uh, five thirty in the morning. Okay. So. He watches it. He doesn't want anyone to tell him anything. He wants to watch from pitch one all the way to the end. That's awesome. And if anyone tells him any any kind of – anything that happened about the game, uh, he, he's going to be pretty mad. So he, he might be more superstitious than, than I am, and <laughs> he just wants to watch from pitch one. Hey, Mike, I'm in with all the analytics and the pitch counts, and I get it trying to keep a guy healthy. But – we were following the pitch count. We're following Bob Melvin. Did you ever at one point want to turn to him in the sixth, seventh inning and say, I don't care if I throw 170 pitches. Until I give up a hit, I'm going to need you to sit down. <laughs> no. ah, he knows that. He knows that. Um, <laughs> you know, but nobody's going to say that. You know, he came up to me then, and he was he was talking about pitch count. And then uh, once I got out of the eighth inning uh, – he didn't come up to me. He, he knew he knew what the deal was. Um, I kind of knew, you know, going into that inning that he told me a couple innings before. He's like, hey, man, you know, if, if anyone gets on base, I'm going to have to come get you. You know, I, you know, this is – the pitch count's getting way up there. You know, we're we're invested in you more than uh, this this one start. So, which I understood, but it almost kind of settled me in because then, you know, from there I just got the last six guys out in the, in the eighth and ninth, so. Congrats, man. That was awesome. Unbelievable. Awesome. Yeah. Mike, we appreciate you uh, getting up early for us. Thanks for, uh, for spending some time with us. Congratulations again on your no-hitter, and good luck the rest of the way. All right, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You got it.